Hey everybody, Bobby Chu here. So I had to do a cover for CDQ, Character Design Quarterly. I'm taking the template right here and I took note of where the spine is and created an idea, a composition. Now I'm working it through. Now the great thing about Sketchbook Pro is exactly what's in the name. It's amazing for sketching. Everything's so loose and quick, it really helped me to get my ideas out quickly as well. Now, even though in the very end, I didn't actually use this painting for Character Design Quarterly, it does show a very accurate idea of the thought process, of the painting process. You can see that I'm painting from back to front. That's generally the way that I do things, just like a normal traditional painting. I usually paint the background and then paint the midground, foreground. That way I won't have to paint around things. The other thing that I tend to do when it's traditional painting versus digital painting is that I tend to start from a darker tone, usually. Not the darkest tone. I leave room for that. But if it's on kind of like a scale of one to 10 from the brightest tone being a one and then the darkest tone being a 10, I'm hovering around seven. You know, so whatever that seven is for each object, that's the tone that I generally will start off with. I think one of the reasons why I didn't really like the end result and didn't actually end up using this concept was actually because I wasn't thinking about it in the right way. I was thinking about it as an illustration depicting a creature in its natural habitat. And in the end, I went with something different because what I ended up doing was thinking about this in terms of what would make a great cover. And in the end, I just thought that the colors I was using and everything on a cover for a magazine, it just didn't really sit that well for me. So even though I liked the idea, in the end, I didn't like it for the cover. But I did like the idea, and that's why I made a video out of it, just to show you the process. At a point in the painting, what I'll do is I will start to bring in the light tones. I'll start to bring in the lighting, and with this, what I was thinking was that the creature is really just hit by a little patch of light coming through the forest and just hitting her on the face. And then she just kind of sits there and is just really enjoying that little spot. Now with close-ups of things, we want to think about the details. We want to think about the subtleties. That's going to be very important. If you just make just normal kind of shape leaves with the same amount of details that you would have put in if you painted these leaves from very far away, then you're not going to get such a good result, right? It, it looked too simplified. Now that we're so up close, we have to think about that. We have to think what other kinds of details do we want to add in here? Same with the little stump, the little branch that this creature is sitting on. How do we want to make that different? Perhaps we can add in some little knobs and things like that. Now, when I get to the face, it's important to note that I actually covered the face. I covered all the details and painted those details back in. I want to avoid painting around things. That way I won't have little gaps of color or little patches of color when it's not supposed to be patchy. It's also sometimes important to take away the background. See what it looks like from no background. Are any gaps missing? Things like that. That can be easily overlooked. And in the original sketch, I had it, uh, another little creature in the mix. So I wanted to add that in as well. So in the end, I kind of liked the image as an idea, as a first draft. But for a cover of a magazine, I just figured it was a little too much. Too many things going on. So there you go. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys next time.